It's not too often I say these words. I called it. Well, to a degree. When we got the, th we talked about yet yesterday, the three thousand hits. I made the prediction that maybe it's a Tony Gwynn, maybe it's a Rod Carew, and it's a Tony Gwynn. So I kind of was right. I don't work for SDS, but I was right. I didn't know it was the twenty fifth anniversary of his three thousand hit. But it sort of made sense because we were talking about this yesterday, how some cards didn't have 3,000 hits. And, and by the way, you guys in the comments who added some of the stuff to it was actually pretty cool because it, it kind of looked like it could have been a 3,000 hits total program where we would get different guys who got the milestone, which would have been pretty effing cool. Granted, that didn't happen. It's just a Tony Gwynn Evolution program. But hey, it's better than nothing. So let's jump in. Let's see it. We'll take a look at the new headliner because i think there's a new headliner day too take a look at that and all that fun stuff and see how quickly and painlessly we can do this so again jumping in here here's the other problem you kind of see it but let's I, let's just start the shop here and we'll sort of see if they added anything i think there is a new headliner let's just double check here there is it is a bill foster bill foster's new headliner a four seamer curve slider change of a sinker again sort of replacing the 85 we got for free uh, he is a two-way guy, not really great offensively with the 96, 70, 88, 65. This card, I think, is going to need a captain because they don't really... Well, he fits the Texas, so I guess that he fits Joe Nathan's team. Um, doesn't fit Corbin, doesn't fit Ralphie. Yeah, he's not live series or 2000s. He, so it's going to be a kind of a funky funky spot he's not a cover guy uh nothing else changed no new no new them so no new that but there is new there was a new yeah <laughs> there is a new headliner okay that's out of the way uh also since we're here and i figured we're i'm trying to stretch this thing out a little bit too sorry uh, let's talk about the supercharge guys because there's some new ones uh o'neill cruz we talked i briefly mentioned this at the end yesterday there's Owen Cruz. He's got three days left. He went five for five with two RBIs and a stolen base on a, over the weekend. Blake Snell, of course, is a no-hitter. I assume there'll be a no-hitter card coming either this week or next week. Not quite sure which one, but it'll probably be similar to the program for my collection reward. We'll kind of see, but be aware that this is that's coming. Anthony Volt beat was the fan supercharged player of the week. I don't really know. They, I don't. They. I wish they put the stats in there, but Anthony Volpe's there, so. Um, there you go. There's supercharged stats right there. Uh, Josh Smith is doing it because he did a walk off home run yesterday, so he'll be supercharged uh, for the next five days, four days. Yeah, five, four, four, five days. Hazy Sanchez hit the biggest, the furthest home run of the year, 480 feet. So of course he's getting supercharged for the next handful of days. And of course we're back to 99 free, 99 Ellie because he uh, got 12 total bases while for while lacing four extra base hits. So he will be back. He will be disgusting. So uh, enjoy using Ellie over the next couple of days. That's all the small stuff. Let's get into the big stuff. Let's get into the thing that uh, we that I, I guess, indirectly called yesterday. So it's an evolution program, again, similar to the Hall of Fame stuff. So these you'll be getting cards along the way. So you're going to get a 95, and it looks like just the 95. So we're going from a 95 to a 99, no 97. Let's take a look at the first card we're going to get here. Max Contact versus right. Very little power. Uh, 119 left and power under 50 for on both right and left 46 and 47 respectively but he's a little bit faster so you're gonna see, he'll be a little bit more speedy so it fits it'll fit the core boost but i don't think we're necessarily gonna be using him for that long necessarily but we will kind of see how that sort of plays out going along the way there we get some packs which is always nice a headline you get one of these and then tony gwen 3000 hit what do we got here so max contact both sides power jumps up to 70 72 against right and left respectively uh clutch is also max they still gave him his speed which he very much not was when he was in his 30s he was kind of pudgy his brother was my hitting coach so i say that with all the love in the world uh, his brother chris was my hitting coach back in the day um but again i this ultimately this is a decent enough card he might have enough power he kind of if he plays like arise and Rod Carew cards kind of do. I think he'll be pretty good. I wish the power might have been closer to 75, but we'll, it could get there. It very well could get there. His reaction's going to be decent enough. He's got a good enough arm. I think this card's pretty good. I don't know if he'll necessarily be starting in right field, 
but he's going to make the question and be a decent enough hitter. I think this card's actually pretty, pretty, it's actually really, really good. So how do you get him? Again, we just, I would say knock out the moments first, as always. Um, get a double, you get three, you get three hits. That might be, probably, the, that might be the most difficult. This is three hits. 1,000 hit, just get a hit, and then another hit. So you're going to get 12 points, and that should give you enough to get the Tony Gwent, the, the first card there. And then it's just stat mission. So the best way to do this, honestly, um, just sort of do this. If there's conquest you still need to do, you can throw it into a conquest. You can play in this computer. You can do it uh, in the event. Do it wherever you feel like you need to. So hits with all Hall Star Series, high contact power with high guys, that get high contact, and then hits with Tony Gwen, stolen bases. That's one might be a little bit difficult. And then you can defeat um, the Padres and All Star for five points. So you really, if you really wanted to, you could throw this in there and try to just do a Padres theme team and take on the Padres. That could be fine. There's also an extreme moment. Um, where he go, gets on base three times, hits a home run, and gets stretch base hits. I don't know how difficult this would be. He doesn't have the a lot of power, and if you're playing in Petco, that might be a little bit difficult, but uh, it'll get you nine points, which is kind of helpful. But again, I don't necessarily think that's... You don't, I, you don't have to do it. I, I'm always the proponent of you should at least try. So you can always try. Now, like I said, this is just the missions you get these are parallel missions, so you get uh, with Padres, with Tony Gwynn, with All-Star Series players, and then with right fielders. So this isn't too, I don't, again, I don't think this will be necessarily overly difficult. It might be a little bit tedious just because of the cards and there's a little bit of a lack. But but the one bright side is similar to what these Hall of Fame ones were. If you sort of make a team, it shouldn't take too terribly long. Uh, I remember Adrian Beltre took a little bit longer because he played with three. He had to do, there were, he played with multiple teams, whereas... Helton and Joe only played with one. So I don't think... It, if it's in the similar vein, this necessarily won't be as difficult. So sort of keep that one in mind that it might seem a little bit more daunting, but again, compared to these two, it's not too difficult. And plus, honestly, if we... While we're just talking about how would we sort of go about this, I think the Padres, honestly, in terms of um, the Padres sort of thing here... Here, oh, whoops. I'm doing a... I was working on the Angels theme team here. I think the Padres um, theme team here with with kind of everything. So like wild cards active and stuff. Um, might not be the worst. Like Luke's Arise there. Is there any good wild cards you could put? Do that. Uh do a little bit of this and then uh oops out wild card i mean you could do that i'm still working on it but you, you sort of see where i'm getting out here like we go like the padres that by themselves like they got plenty like you could use flashback steve finley and then just fill the bench and stuff so, like you could use this team and then remember you're gonna get a tony one to put in right field so you could you know, move Tati somewhere, go about it that way, and then her pitching, realistically here, with, you could fill it up with 99s and just use Dylan C. Snow hitter card. It shouldn't, like I said, I don't think this will be over, necessarily overly difficult, kind of, with how it is, and then you can just use your wild cards uh, to, to sort of fill in the gaps, and plus it help you with Team Affinity, which is always, which is always nice, like, throw him in there, then you got an extra wild card spot, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably what I would do. Let me just fill this out, because I don't know what you can do. I, I do this trick all the time. I <laughs> just throw all the 99s you got, and then this is the picture you want to use. I wish I had one more, but I think the highest... Oh, he's in it. Okay, Cookley owns a 99, technically, because I paralleled him. Then you just use the whatever card you want. Like, that's that's how I would write it, and then just fill up the bullpen, sort of the same thing. Go to Padres, like, just Padres, and then just fill it up. I think the Padres, like, I think the Padres are um, fairly okay when it comes to comes to it here. There you go. Yeah, you can just fill it up with the bullpen from, pa from the Padres. If there's a walk, yeah, you can use the Diamond uh, Yusuke Matsui there. Fill it up. If you got their team captains, use the team captain. Go wild, go crazy, folks, go crazy. This, I think this will be fairly easy. Again, there's plenty of pod race cards to use. Utilize your wild cards at this point if you need to. You don't want to, hey, that's fine too. 
just um, I I just say, hey, you got him, might as well use him, and you got a full diamond team of Padres that you got basically for playing the game. I'm sure there's some that I miss. I'm positive, but those are all the free ones that you get just for playing the game, except for Chief Finley. He is a collector award, so he's not totally free to play. But that's how I would do it, and then again, to knock out those missions, I don't think it's going to take too terribly long to sort of get to that point. All right, but that is that. That is the Padre stuff. That is all the fun stuff that is coming up today, that dropped today. Um, I want to wrap it up by talking about something I saw on Twitter talking about how it seems like content gets a little bit better as things go along. I, I think the biggest reason for that is I want, I think season one is more scripted than all the other ones where it seems like they're a little more rigid in the scheduling. Because one thing I remember talking about previously is the number of programs that were out early on were sort of the same as they were for the previous year. I'm not saying that's the case, but it does sort of seem like that's where they're going because they're working on other stuff so that it can kind of be a little more flexible because a lot of stuff did come out in packs, but I think that was mainly because it was just fixated content where it was just the way things were going. But it seems like now we're kind of, we're doing more connections with what's really going on and stuff like this. I'm not quite sure why that's my explanation for it. Somebody said uh, it was between Scan and Chev, and Chev made the comment that it might have been the Team Affinity stuff that they're kind of locked into, which is probably partially true. But usually when it comes to games like this, for the most part, it's usually they have stuff locked in in certain slots. In certain slots, they can kind of maneuver stuff a little bit. But for the most part, a lot of it's set in stone. Uh, let me know what you think down below, whether about the content in general, how it sort of seems like we kind of... The content sort of... Um, sort of does weird things. Do you think it's sad? Do you think it's something else? Do you like the Honey Gwynn card? I think it's pretty snazzy. I think it's a good free to play card to help people with collections along the way as we get closer and closer to the end. So let me know down below. Leave a like. If you like it, dislike if you dislike, leave a comment down below. All that fun, subscribe so you don't miss more. And I'll be the show action here on the channel. With all that being said, my name is Specs. I'll see you guys all in the next one.